All right, we are getting the motor in. Easiest to get it through the side on this side. I got the, we have the transmission in there. So it looks like it's gonna go in pretty easy. Got the clutch and flywheel on there. Uh, I got my front seal that came in this morning. That's already put on, super easy stuff to do. And uh, I ended up just triangulating the, the mounting points from where the power steering is to one of the alternator right here and then the middle stud that goes there. And headers are in place. We already cleaned all that stuff, washed and cleaned in here in the engine bay. And uh, uh, oh, the engine mounts, we took those loose. Those were a pain to get off. So uh, in the future, we're going to change them, breaking off the, the nuts for, for, the, for, the, for the mounts. We put some penetrating oil and um, heated them up because or else they were not coming off at all. It was, I was really giving at it and uh, they weren't budging. So I didn't want to find that out once we had the, the engine inside the car and in the future we wanted to change them out. Now at least they're going to be broken free. So I'm going to work it in there and then we're going to keep going from there. Engine's in. That went pretty really smooth. What we did was uh, definitely the right way to do it super smooth so motor mounts what we did is uh i i uh took off the pedestals the ones that hold bolt onto the to the four bolts on the engine that made it super easy to maneuver into the uh, transmission and uh made it those up pretty pretty straightforwardly and then we did the motor mounts after that and it just pretty much fell in place so right now i actually got back from dinner and put the spark plugs in we put the headers on put the heat shields in there and uh, i haven't done that side just yet i already tightened down the oil cooler lines the two that go there don't forget your dipstick so and on the headers <laughs> i highly recommend you leave your heat shields on highly recommend it um i've ran across people that claimed they've had their headers ceramic coated and that they didn't need no heat shield and that because they were good without putting their their physical you know heat guard their heat shields you need those on that definitely deflects heat from actually coming in and especially in this area right here um you have your evaporator that's right in here that's going to heat things up even more than what it should be and uh, more importantly anything around here it's going to heat things up especially the the intake box for for your ac here you got that plastic it's all plastic and i've seen those where they just completely melt because they don't put their heat shields on um just you know you got to do what i'm telling you because if you don't you're going to run into those issues leave your heat guards on leave them on i know you want to see your headers and you got them ceramic coated Leave your heat guards on. You'll thank me. So that's what it looks like in now. This side's over here. Uh, still working on putting that on. Uh, I wanted to show you the gaskets we're using for it. Which are these. And I was trying to look for the old ones. I don't know. Maybe I threw them away or Joe put them somewhere. I just can't find them. Probably tossed them. I wanted to show you in comparison. You know what? I see one on the floor. Give me one second. I'll go grab it. It's right over here, actually. Here we go. So, let me show you why I like the ones we're going to put on now versus this stuff. These, you can see, they're just that graphite stuff. They work pretty good. Uh, they do work. Um, but... I prefer these. These just seem like they're going to be a lot better. Um, this is what usually what GM puts in there. So uh, I'm going to try them out. And I think they're going to be better in the long run. They're going to be, once they set in place, I think they're going to be good. Those graphite ones, they tend to leak sometimes. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see, right? So I think these are going to be good. This is the part number that I got from them. They're, they're Cometics. There's a part number. And these are the intake gaskets for the Gen 2. Gen 2 are only going to be specific for Gen 2, so don't try to think SRT are working. 
I think those the header ones say the SRT even work for it. But these are specifically Gen 2 only, Gen 1, Gen 2. And these are just the, the those paper that paper intake gasket, which once you once you pull this off, it's you gotta pretty much scrap it and it's not usable at that point anymore. But uh until I find something else better, maybe you know, just keep using this one. Let me get back to it. And then Maybe the next video or the next uh, scene will be uh, filling up with oil or something like that. So we'll see. Everything seems to be all hooked up and ready to go. Valve covers, intake torqued, power steering, belt on, all the cooling lines, coolant tank, even the air box. <sighs> Coils on, fans connected, the bracing, idle air control, crank sensor, O2 sensors. Motor mounts have been tightened, starter, clutch is on, slave cylinder, headers, clutch needs bleeding, that'll be tomorrow. Uh, coolant is pre-bled, so what you do is on these engines, so you don't get major air pockets at initial, you don't fill it just straight directly in here. What I do is we pull out the hoses here and then we pre-fill it this way. That way the radiator gets filled up all the way as much as it can. And then um, uh, coolant was coming out from the block. So this will be a good start to get it. Once it gets warmed up, everything will rise up and then it'll burp itself uh, as it should. And we just kind of do that several times. So when it's stone cold, uh, when it hasn't ran, when it's stone cold, that's when you fill it up and then you top it off. And you kind of just keep playing with it that and just keep monitoring until uh, air pockets are out. Spark plug wires are on. I'm going to crank it and or actually I already filled it up with oil and I already had initially cranked it. And what I did is just pull off the injectors. You could probably pull out the coils, but I, I think the injectors were good. It was kind of trying to start just because there's fuel pressure going through there. Uh, even though injectors, whatever it was doing, it was trying to, but... Uh, I mean, it wasn't trying to, but it was just kind of giving a little gee, little chug or two. Uh, injector, so we know for sure it's got fuel pressure. So now that these are going to be hooked up. Oh, that's why it was cranking. I forgot to unhook that one. That makes sense. So we're going to hook all these up. I missed one. That's, that's why it was doing what it was doing. So hooking all these 10 V10 ones up. It's a V10. Now, um, now it should fire. I'm going to put the uh, tripod on and see what it does. Make sure there's no leaks. Check oil pressure. And uh, it might run kind of sloppy only because I don't have the air box. Not sure where it's at. But we, uh, uh, the sensor for the, for the uh, intake air temp, it might throw it off and it's kind of cold out here. So, But it's just for initial fire up. So we're going we're gonna to see. Let me let me put the tripod on. Okay, so I'm gonna do a first fire up. I'm pretty sure it's gonna crank up pretty quickly. Let's, let's see what it does. I already, like I said, I already uh, did the priming on the oil pressure. If we already had 40 psi, I'm just cranking, and uh, fuel pressure should be already picked up. So I have a feeling it's just gonna light up.
like a like a kitty. It's got about 60 pounds of oil pressure in there. Sign for uh, minimal air in the, in the in the cooling system. I'm gonna shut it down there, probably end the video, and uh, I guess the next one will be kind of just a driving video. This will be the end of it. Well, I did the fire up on the last one. We already did the first oil change on it, and did all the test driving. Had a few oil leaks on the valve covers. Went ahead and pulled them off and then just put a bead of uh, sealant around the, the lower adapter plate and then uh, on the valve cover itself. And then had a coolant leak on one of the heater hose piping. I'll show you right now where I was talking about. And that's it. We we got it. it went for ready for the initial break-in, the test ride. I'm just going to do a walk around and do a fire up the one last, one last time. And she's off the... Our friend's about to come pick her up right now, here in a bit, maybe in a few minutes. And uh, let me let me fire it up for you guys. So one quick thing I wanted to mention was we put the k and filter system in there. Uh, the stock piping are pretty bad. They're real restricted, especially with a modified engine. So what we did is we put the, the one of the old pipes that he had before and uh we put uh the three inch pipe in there it it probably could honestly use the straight three inch pipe and then adapt it to fit the throttle bodies right the couplers but we made that fit in there but since he has the aftermarket radiator and with an aftermarket fan it makes it very difficult to fit in there so uh it does they don't have the best clearance at all so this bar right here ends up getting in the way a lot a lot of the times when you close the hood it works but it, it doesn't things could be better but it does work so it is a lot better than what the the factory piping give you on the k n setup because that if you try to use theirs there's just no way that'll ever work with uh with that radiator and fan but let me fire it up for you dirty she's about to get detailed inside out but the valve cover spacers were leaking on the first time this pipe right here the heater pipe that goes around here was leaking it had a pinhole um, and then the clamps, just little things like that were popping up here and there, but everything else passed the flying colors. All right, that's it. You guys take care, God bless, and see you all in the next one. Peace.